So welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. Today is August the 20th, 2020. This is a new human experience podcast and the topic for this evening is attention. So this is my uh, third talk on the um, August theme. The theme of August is really simple habits to raise your consciousness. So today I want to talk about attention because energy goes where your attention is and whatever it is that you place your attention on will grow. So then that's because you, you are at heart at the, the source when you um, like within yourself, the true self of you is a creator and you create with intention and attention. So intention is really how you focus on something. And attention is your energy. So these two are actually very simple but very fundamental concepts. So that's why your attention, your intention is so important because that those are really the simple ways that you create your reality each and every moment. So in this age of information, it's the age of information because the internet and, and if you look anywhere, it's like um, if you just look at your cell phone, it's really a, a very um, elaborate computer that is so small that you can actually carry around with you because with this, with your cell phone, you can actually you know, get all sorts of information and um, and so you just have to type in a few words, whatever it is that you want to to search or know more more of. You just have to type in a few words, whether you have a cell phone or a laptop or even a big desktop, um, whatever you have. You just have to type in a few words, and you don't even have to know the spelling of the words. You can misspell words, and still, if you type in something that's close enough then the, um, the, the search engine will actually start to bring back information. Now, whether those information is really the answers that you're looking for, that's a different matter. However, it's age of information where it's so much information throwing at you. There's so many things that is vying or um, just demanding to get your attention. And everywhere you look, someone or some company or something is trying to get your attention. It could be a TV, it could be internet, cell phone, um, supermarket, YouTube, meetups, going to talk to different people. So, so many ways of people trying to get your attention, trying to say something to you, to give you um, their thoughts and all this. It's because everyone knows that um, if they can if they can get your attention, then they can actually somehow get something from you, either make money off you, market something to you, sell something to you, whether that thing is an idea or a product, whatever it is. If they can get your attention, then they can they can. Um, if not sell, then at least um, get you to agree to their point of view. So everything is just trying to get your attention. And you actually don't quite notice that. But your attention is actually your most prized currency. Because um, if you have your attention and you couple that with the intention, you can actually create a reality for yourself. You can make something real. You can create, you can start to have experience and all that. And on a physical level, people can actually make money off you just by getting your attention. That's why the, the, the focus of all the social media of YouTube is really to capture your attention for as long as possible because they know that when they can get your attention, then they can get something from you. They can 
um, whether it is to sell you an idea or sell you an object. All they need is your attention. So your attention is valuable. So as I mentioned already, that you are a creator, and when you when your attention has been hijacked by all these different blinking lights, all sorts of information, people trying to get your attention, all the different gadgets um, trying to get your attention, so that they can enlist your attention, your energy to create something that is um, what they want you to create rather than what you naturally from your true self want to create. So that is really what's going on. And, and the one simple shift that you can do is really to regain control of your own creative ability. And that is just to regain your own attention. And by trying to, then by really doing your best to start to have it so that your attention is under your control and actually not being um, not being controlled by someone else. If you can just do that, then you can start to be more powerful creator. So if you can actually think of your attention as being the, the, your currency, your gold, the gold reserve that you actually have, that you don't even know you have, and that is your gold because your attention is how you can actually create your reality. And when your attention is being spread about so many times, like so, so thinly, Focus on creating what you want. You are actually being hijacked over and over again to create things that other people want you to create. They have hijacked your attention. They have hijacked your intention as well. So how do you take back your attention? That really is the million dollar question. So I have actually a few ways to suggest that you can start to take back your attention. Um, the first one is that when you have unfinished projects, things that you have started off doing, it's well, project maybe it's too big a word for it, but if something you started to do something you have in mind, let's say the project is you want to, you know, um, bake, make a bread or something. Let's say you, you have the intention that you want to learn how to make your own bread. So that's kind of like a project and you kind of have bought some ingredients and, and may, you may even have uh, Googled how to, how to make bread, but you haven't really done it. So that's an incomplete. And then let's say you agreed to help someone to, you know, clean their closet, for example, but you really have not, but you really don't want to do it. So, so you've been trying to um, delay and delay and delay. And that's another project that is being um, incomplete. Or if you're like me, um, I have a lot of knitting projects, some of them, I have completed some of them. Uh, I've been, you know, still um, in the works for the last couple of years now. So those are incomplete projects. So these are all just different examples of, of incomplete projects. And you all have your own set of incomplete objects. And each one of those incomplete op projects actually holds a bit of your attention. So that's why your attention is not entirely yours. And every time when you walk past and see something that reminds you of one of those incomplete attentions, so incomplete um, projects, then a part of your attention is being um, taken away and, and, and portioned off. 
So first step is to really make a list of all the incomplete projects that you have, whether it is at home, lying around in your home or in the office, just look, just make a list of all those. Sit down, it only takes maybe a couple of minutes to list all those. And just once you've listed them, look over each incomplete project and simply do um, make a decision on them. So is this project something that is still worth my while to complete it? Or is my, um, or do I really have no interest in completing it whatsoever now or never? So make a choice. You're either going to complete something or you're going to leave it and abandon it. So for the ones that you have decided to complete, then kind of put those in an, uh, um, create a different list where you rank them in order of priority and have some rough estimate as well on when you will start on completing them and um, when you think they would be done by. So in other words, have a plan, prioritize them and have some sort of plan, very rough plan. It does not have to be, anything that is too elaborate. Just spend maybe 10, 15 minutes just thinking about, okay, so which of the projects that I have decided to actually go and complete them is important. What's the, the priority of them? Which ones needed to be started first, second, third, and just prioritize them and have some rough estimate of how long it's going to take. It's something that you are going to do today and it can, it only takes, let's say, 30 minutes to complete and then you should be able to do it the same day and then if something that you can start today but it's going to take you maybe you know two or three days then you know just give yourself a um, a rough estimate of how long it's going to take and and when it's the completion date is going to be just have a very rough plan you don't need to um really in get um you know, you don't, you don't have to make anything too elaborate or time consuming and, you know, make that another project, a project to prioritize your unfinished projects. So don't go that crazy. It's just a very rough plan, something that's only going to take you no more than 20 minutes to just write down. And then once you've completed that, then, um, then you have a plan rough plan, but you, you have a plan. So, so that would start to release some of your energy and attention on those incomplete uh, projects. And then for the ones that you have really decided that you're going to leave and abandon and, and you don't no longer want to spend any more of your energy on them, then take some time to, to emotionally disconnect from them from the projects, from the unfinished projects, and really get it, allow yourself and let it sink in that these are the projects that at one point seems like a great idea, but now that's no longer important to me. So I'm going to just cut my losses and that's it. They are, I don't want to spend any more time and emotional distraction on them just make that emotional disconnection and then also do the physical cleanup as well let's say if it's um something like a like one of my uh, knitting projects if i no longer want to finish it for whatever reason then either decide to throw the throw it out or maybe just um uh donate it to someone else, um, give it away, make other arrangements, whatever it is. And if the projects, unfinished projects um, involve other people, then go and have the um, plan to go and have the conversation with those people. Let them know what your decision is and just get it over with. But really do a clean up so that you can free up your attention completely on those projects that you have decided to no longer spend any more energy on them. And so that they can, it's a clean cut. So that's the first step is to list all your unfinished projects, decide whether you're going to complete or you're going to leave them. And for the ones that you want to complete, prioritize, make a plan for them, 
the ones that you don't want to complete, really finish with them. Emotionally and physically, intentionally, just do whatever it takes to take care of it so that it's completely collapsed. It does not need your attention on them anymore once you have done all of this letting go. And then the next one is really look at what is, I have another list, a list of things that are taking up your attention. For example, um, maybe your health is taking up your attention, maybe financial situation, maybe your relationship with you know, certain people in your family, or so whatever it is that is taking up your attention, that is fixing your attention. Because if it's something that you, that is always bothering you, then your attention is there. Even if it is negative attention, it's still attention. So list all of the things that's taking up your attention. List all of them, make a list first. And then after you have that list, for each item on that list, write a brief, brief paragraph, like have a little bit of a plan, just, just very briefly. It's not, I'm not asking you to um, do anything that is elaborate. Just write a brief couple of lines to say, how do you plan to handle that situation? Whatever that situation may be, could be your health, could be finance, could be relationship, whatever it is. How do you plan to handle the situation? And if you don't know how to handle it, then at least um, write that you're going to figure out how to handle it. Because whatever it is, you, once you start to, once you focus on finding the solution, then the solution will start to show up. So set, put down the intention that you want to figure out how to handle the situation. So which means is another way of having a plan for all of those. It does not need to be an elaborate plan, just a few um, lines to kind of show what your intention is, how to clear that area that is, um, that is taking your attention away that is draining your attention. So, so then this step two is also to list everything that is taking up your attention and then um, have a plan for them. And if you don't know how to handle it right now, then, then have a plan to, to have a plan. So figure out how to handle it. And so once you have that, then also just notice how your attention seems to be more at ease because even though you you still have not um, gotten to them yet but at least you know more about how you're gonna diffuse the situation or um, start to shift the situation and then if you just do these two steps just after you've done these two steps of unfinished projects and in anything, any situation in your life that is taking your attention away, that is fixing your attention in, in some way, have a plan to handle them. After these two, and it probably um, won't take you more than an hour to, to have all of this done. Um, not to clear everything up, but just to have a plan to how to clear it up. And then just spend a little bit of time, maybe 10, 15 minutes, to just sit quietly with, by yourself um, with as little distraction as possible. Just sit there and just observe. Observe what's still in your mind. And just notice what else is trying to, um, like what thoughts is occupying your attention still. And just quietly observe that your, your, the process in your mind for 15 minutes maybe, start with 15 minutes. And if you didn't notice anything, then um, 15 minutes is more than enough. 
But if you still find that there's your mind is very noisy, then just start to take note of what else it's still lingering in your mind that you have not um, taken care of and see if you can what else what item have you missed that you need to either that falls into either one of the unfinished projects category or things that is is um, demanding your attention and then it usually falls into one of those two things so just observe the conversation in your mind and this process is simply to notice what else you have um, somehow forgot or missed when you do the the step one and the step two that's being left out of the list so you may want to try just try this process of noticing what's what else is um, taking up your attention for a couple of days i don't mean you you sit around all day and, and notice it i mean for each day in the next couple of days is to spend 15 minutes just to observe the thoughts in your mind and see what and what is what's the conversation what's the hot conversation the hot topic that is still going through your mind and that will remind you of things that you more things that you can put on either step one or step two and probably after a couple of days though um, most likely you would have covered everything and then it's time to really go and go over and start to, to take action to disentangle your the, the the things the events the all those things that is taking up your attention and as you do those things of releasing your attention and finishing those unfinished projects and also starting to um, take steps to disentangle your life so that things that you don't know how to do to start to find a way to start to take back your own attention and when you have more of your own ten attention then the next step next step is really to start to train your attention so how do you train your attention and um we've been trained to be distracted because you know a lot of people especially people that live alone the first thing they do in the morning is to turn on the radio or turn on a tv why because you know yeah they they want some some noise some information there to distract themselves and and so all these things so when you start to detox your your um these distractions in your life it does not mean that your attention is free because your attention has been distracted for so long you have to start to um have some learn to to get your attention back to focus again so how to do it i would suggest to just start with maybe 15 20 minutes at most 30 minutes each day each day when you um, to do this training is for 15 to 30 minutes however long you think you can manage it is what you do is set that time aside for yourself and what you do within that 15 to 30 minutes time is you be very deliberate. You deliberately choose how you're going to, where you're going to put your attention. For example, you can start with something very simple, like I choose to look at my thumb, for example. Start very simple. You don't need any gadgets, just a, your thumb, because everybody has two thumbs. So pick one, right, right thumb or left thumb, just for, let's say, choose to put your attention on your thumb for, let's say, two minutes, because um, I'm not sure about your thumb, but my thumb is 
maybe not the most spectacular things to observe for more than two minutes, but you know, you may feel differently, but just um, set the intention out that you're going to spend, let's say two minutes or however long you want and decide where you're going to put your attention on. The example I give is your thumb. So set the intention to look at your thumb, observe it completely from 360 degrees and really get to know your thumb for two minutes. Do that. So the, the idea is not to, um, you know, it's the idea is to start to train your attention to do what you choose to do rather than let your attention just go all the way and be completely distracted is for 15 to 30 minutes every thing that you put attention to choose it choose to put your attention on your thumb and then choose to put your attention let's say on hearing what you hear when you are observing your thumb so choose everything very deliberately how you put your attention and this is really the the beginning so you can start maybe the first week just do that it's very it's i know it seems very trivial but it's actually starting to train yourself to focus, to be able to be the boss of your attention. And then after you become comfortable with that, after you um, think that you're, when you feel your attention's more under your control, then you can get more elaborate. You can do things like, okay, so I want to choose to focus my attention on, let's say, visualizing how to complete project A, for example, how to um, create whatever it is that I want in my, create that mind movie in yourself, just have that visualization. So you can get more elaborate uh, when your attention becomes more under your control, when you can actually choose to focus your attention on something and hold it for as long as you choose to hold it. That really is the start of this. That's really the start of tr starting to get back into the creator seat. So you start to create your own reality rather than having your, your attention being completely distracted by your environment, by what it is that you need to do 10 minutes from now, or you need to you know, meet somebody, or you need to go get grocery or whatever. All those things are distracting your attention. So start to gather your attention again so that you can become the master of your own attention. And when you can do that, even for 15 minutes, imagine if you can actually have your attention be so focused that you can actually create the reality that you choose rather than have everyone else, all your environment to distract you so that things just happen to you. So. That is really the, the, the three or four steps that I would recommend to start to regain your own attention. The more of your attention that can be under your control, the more you can create and the faster you can create and the more miraculous your creation can be. And when you start to do that, then do repeat the step one and step two um, more regularly because as, as life goes on, there may be new unfinished projects around or there may be other things that is 
is distracting you, then every, I would say at least every month or so, if not more often, to, to make a list of unfinished projects and a list of things that are distracting you, fixing your attention to, so that your attention is no longer you, under your control. Mm -hmm. It could be something that you worry about, let's say health, finance, all those things are things that, that is fixing your attention so that your attention is not under your own control. You just unconsciously wander and think that way. So this, this one simple habit is to just start to let go of the things, have a plan for how to handle the things that is distracting you, all those unfinished projects, and then start to train your own attention so that you get back your attention. Your attention is now more and more under your control. The more you can let go of the distraction, the more you have your attention back and really do that daily exercise of just taking 15 to 30 minutes to, to start to focus your attention. And you can focus it to anything that you want. Start simple and you can get as complicated as you care to. And then just with that, you can start to grow your own consciousness and be able to have more of the command of your own attention and be the creator of your own life.